Please read the public. It is Friday, January the 22nd, 1999. I'm Brian Gorey. Thank you very much for calling the Pool Wrestling Insider Last Night Extreme Championship Wrestling. So ECW is supposed to represent the Tuesday Night Wars. I mean, theoretically, that would actually have a place on Tuesday Night Wars, considering the fact that ECW has become a major player in professional wrestling in the last, I don't know, two years or so, having pay-per-views and all. And uh, I think the idea, the concept of ECW on, on Tuesday Night Wars is, is something that, that has to, it cannot be overlooked, and it has to be uh, given the attention that it deserves. However, I think in uh, the time, uh, the, the constraints as far as Tuesday Night Wars is concerned, and the adaptation, or, or the way that it has, uh, it has been drawn out uh, throughout the last couple of years, and basically the overall format of Tuesday Night Wars does not really leave a place for a third party. It's kind of like a, uh, well, it's, it, really, it really doesn't make any uh, any sense. Uh, I, I, obviously, if you, look, if you look at the demographics, if you look at the overall um, uh, feeling of professional wrestling fans that call the smart mark for wrestling hotline ecw has no representation because it doesn't uh, frankly deserve representation and that's not taking away anything against extreme championship wrestling uh that's not taking it away, away anything from their fan base however as far as the smart mark line goes i don't really think that that, a, that an ecw representation is worthy at this point and uh maybe down the line uh ecw could get an option uh, hotline but as you see in four three numbers in, in, in the hotlines, um, ECW is not represented well, and there is a reason for that. And if uh, that's your uh, that, I mean, a desperate attempt to get back on Tuesday Night Wars, um, you know, so you know, so be it. I mean, obviously you have your right to try and fight to get back in there. Um, but uh, that's as far as ECW. That. This is the first time I've called this line in about two months, and I'm uh, actually very happy to hear some wrestling news. I didn't uh, didn't know a few of the things that you had on there, so that was pretty pretty good. If, if they come true, that'll be fine. The, the Blue Blazer, Steve Austin thing seems conceivable, although I don't think that's going to happen. Um, that's uh, that's all right now, and uh, thank you very much. And skipping. Urgent. Listen. Welcome. I'm by virtue of Wrestling Revolution update live after the ECW show at the Michigan State Fairgrounds. My name is Mr. Upon 8, Ron Showtime, and welcome to the Revolution, the manager of the whole fucking show, Bill Alfonso. Uh, evening, Pro Wrestling Revolution. This is how you should check out our pay-per-view March 21st, live daddy, Mr. Monday Night, living dangerously. That's what it's all about. And I'm Bill Alfonso, and I'm the manager of Sabu, Suicide or Homicide or Genocide, which just came off a big tour with kick ass and take names. Uh, and guess what happened? Big ass, fat ass, short tabs, open issued challenge to, uh, to my guy. And he did the wrong thing, brother. Because I'll tell you what, this goes back a long way, and he is hot. That was suicide on our title, Genocide. We just beat one man game up so bad. Well, I was looking at him as Taz. We want Taz right here in Detroit Live. Thank you. That'd be pretty sweet, huh? Hey, uh, anyway, I got a lot of time, but I don't. It's not a king's out of building, but I'm not leaving. Besides that, I got to go to the side parlor. I got to fight. You got to pick up my lady. You got many things to do. So, uh, pro wrestling, uh, revolution daddy, keep on doing what you're doing. Call in every one. See ya. Thanks, Fuzzy. You're the shit, man. Thanks for being on the pro wrestling revolution. It's been an honor, man. Have a nice time. See you in May. All right, that's going to wrap it up for here on the pro wrestling revolution. Thank you very much for calling. So, here's an impromptu update. Oh yeah, no gimmicks is here live with Ron Showtime and Fonz, Joe Alfonso straight from the Mission State Fairgrounds right here watching these guys take down the ring. Actually got a job offered from one of the guys take down the ring. He said it, if we could take him down, ECW will hire us on the spot. I told him to check me out in May, May 22nd to see about that. Oh, wait, Ron, we're by virtue of winning the Royal Rumble, we have a brand new World Wrestling Federation champion as the press watches on at this time to present the title belt to the new champion. Bob Ross, get them up. But now we just call the revolution to see if Ron Showtime was back, like many others, I'm sure. I have a question for you involving Ron Showtime. I don't know if anyone's ever asked specifically this exact question before. Uh, back in the day, of course, when Ron Showtime was on the revolution on a regular basis, he was always totally, almost, except when he had amnesia, uh, pro-WWF. My question is this. Now with Bruce and Ferrar and WCW, let's just take the scenario. This probably won't happen, but let's just say that at a certain point, maybe half a year down the road, Nitro will be much, much, 
much better than Raw. So that even the, the strongest WWF marks would watch those shows and say, no comparison, Nitro is better. At that point, can you ever envision a scenario where Ron Showtime would declare that his loyalty to the WWF is over and that from this point forward he would be a WCW fan? Can you see any scenario where that would happen if, if Nitro ever turned out to be way better than Raw? Could you ever see Ron Showtime switching sides? Anyway, I'll uh, talk to you later. Peace out. End of message. Erase, press 7. Skipping. Urgent. Hey, Bob Lossick, it's Samuel. I got the latest message you sent me, and I was talking to Revolution again to see if Mr. Up on that round shot that was back then. <laughs> you do a great imitation of Jason Shy, that was awesome. Uh, you know, it did occur to me, there was a rumor going around about, I don't know, six, seven months ago, I have no idea if this was true, that word somehow got to uh, Ron that Vince Russo himself used to call the Revolution and listen to his tape, and that allegedly Vincent Russo was somehow going to pull strings and try to get Ron Showtime hired by the WWF, which would have been very cool. Now, of course, with Russo now working for WCW, you can just that's another argument why Ron might want to switch sides. And then there's this. Let's say, I think you told me that Ron has, you know, in the last few months has been busy with other things and probably hasn't been watching the wrestling way he used to. So let's assume for the moment that the reason he hasn't been on the revolution lately is that he wants to wait for this Monday and catch up on his TV viewing. What happens if Ron, you know, he watches, let's say, Raw Live and he watches Nitro on the late night replay. What happens if Ron, in his own mind, thinks that Nitro is the better show? What does he do? Does he somehow brainwash himself into thinking that Raw is still the better show? Or does he come out of the revolution and say, hey, let's face it, Russo is wrestling. The show that he's booking, Nitro, is the better show now. And that's it. I'm done supporting the WWF. I'm a WWF fan from this, or WCW fan from this point on. I mean, I can name you several people who've already reached that exact conclusion, including one person I never thought would switch from the WWF, who already has. I'm not going to name names here. But uh, that would be incredible. If Ron Showtime had this dilemma in his own mind, if he truly felt Nitro was the better show, and yet he felt he had to support Raw because, you know, that's his thing. And it would just give him a, a tremendous conflict there, so who knows. Anyway, I'm just speculating as usual. And I'll talk to you later. My minute at work should be very interesting this week. And remember, yes. If, if Ken from Taylor can beat Bucktooth Charlie, and that's, that's going to be close, the so Bucktooth has to be the favorite there. But if he can, we're on Showtime is scheduled next. If he's around, if he's back by then, so I'll talk to you later. Peace out. End of message. Erase. Skipping. Urgent. Hey, Mr. Up All Night, Ron Showtime. I think you're back. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. Ten minutes of a Ron Showtime's greatest hit over the past year. Listen, catch Monday Night Wars tomorrow night. Uh, might be surprised. Nice has gotten a little better since the last time you watched him. Trust me. Anyway, talk to you later. Peace out. End of message. Erase. <laughs> Skipping. Urgent. Hey, Ron, living, breathing man. <laughs> What's up? I got your message. Listen, this is probably be the best bet uh, to get you on main menu. Uh, smart, Mark. Let's try it this way. I know you've been out of the loop for a long, long time. I know you've had you know, stuff in your personal life and so on and so forth. Let's try this way. Uh, when you have actually had a chance to watch both shows, I, know, I don't know how much wrestling you've been able to get into your schedule over the last few months. I have no idea what you've been, you know, what you've been up to. But when you have actually had a chance to watch both shows, preferably tonight, as a matter of fact, it's got to be a real good one this week. It's really just the one football game. There's no hockey. There's no baseball. Both shows should probably be real good. Let me know. And uh, let me think. Oh, can it be Tuesday? Tuesday night was Wednesday. Let's see what I'm do the mark for a second tape. Uh, could either be on a Friday. Friday, I usually do the main menu solo, or a non-pay-per-view Sunday. Either one of those days. Uh, just let me know when you have a free day there, like I said, on a Friday or on a Sunday. And, uh, oh, there's the numbers. Uh, the, <laughs> the 4928 that you're thinking of, that was the access <laughs> to Zeus Now Wrestling Line. The expensive number that you're trying to remember is 4645, not 4928. So if you want to give me a call, the toll free number is one 800 678 6400, and then when the computer asks you for an extension, dial 4645. That's the number you're trying to remember there, 4645. So give me a call, and uh, we'll see what we can do. And uh, <laughs> all that up. You, you must have so many tape recordings laying around your house. It's unbelievable. You have tape recordings dating back to before the birth of Christ. It's amazing. You can remember what's there. Well, that's, that's the hard part. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Peace out. End of message. Erase. Skipping. This was this, this classic. This is like the big show at the Academy Awards for uh, Raw Line. This is, this is it. That was the complete best picture I've ever seen.
Metro Show from the Grand Garden Arena at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Plus, we'll check out what's next for Bret Hart now that Goldberg, and not Bret, turned out to be the one who took Hogan's title away. And we'll see if The Undertaker has what it takes to put an end to Stone Cold Steve Austin's title reign at SummerSlam. But first, in case you missed it, Ron Showtime has an awesome interview with Dan the B. Severn on the Pro Wrestling Revolution at 313-438-1592, which ran all day Thursday and was still on as of 10 a.m. Friday. During the interview, Severn very candidly said that although WCW is using Bill Goldberg to the best of his abilities, those abilities are rather limited, and Severn says it is very unlikely that Goldberg could wrestle his way out of a wet paper sack. As far as real-life wrestling or fighting goes, Severn is one of the best in the world, a former Ultimate Ultimate Champion in UFC, proven time and again that Severn would just destroy Goldberg in any shoot match by about a 100-to-1 margin. On the other hand, the question now becomes, what has happened to Ron Showtime? Where has Ron Showtime gone? Well, I got my scenario. I'm about to hit it, break it down to you. Here's what I think of the whole situation. You know, you might not even be getting this. It might be Hollywood clearing out your mess box. Ugh. Mess, message box. Excuse me, where's he at? Where's the kid? Well, if you ask me, I do believe he has been kidnapped by the smart mark crew. That's Big D, ML, and the whole crew. Why? Again, as I said in the past, because they fear we're on Showtime and the revolution. Big D wants to knock him off his game, try to shake him up a little bit, but he's not having it, Big D. We're on Showtime coming at you. And the rest of the Smart Mark bitches, in full effect, come Tuesday. Ain't that right, Ron Showtime? Ah, like I said, I didn't say this is J.J. Melvin, though. By the way, we'll be down at JLA today spreading propaganda. If you get this, if you don't, I don't know what the hell is going on. Give me a call. This is Sergeant Kelly, the 16th Precinct. What can I do for you? Uh, yes, my name is Fat Matt. I'm with the Triple X Pro Wrestling Hotline. Um, now, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm calling to find out if you can enlighten me on the situation at hand with Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was arrested at Joe Arena earlier this evening. No, we have no comment for that. Uh, excuse me? No comment. Um, why is there no comment? Like I said, there's no comment for that. Sure. Um, we, the people here, we have a right to know what's going on with Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was arrested. I, I, I want them to go into the squad car. Listen, and I said there's no comment for that, okay? Sure. We have a freedom. We have a right to know what is going on with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and I want to exercise that right right now. I don't now. know why the hell you're calling, but there's no comment for that. I've had enough of this shit already. Just give me what... <laughs> I'm going to get a revelation dropped around Showtime. I'm back to you 100%. There's no doubt about it. I'm going to you think The Rock could get two pieces of monkey crap about you, Ken Shamrock, and your little frustration? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, The Revolution, the Smart Rock Live, probably big to you, is Tuesday Night Wars. Anyway, champion of the world! Get you up all night! Watch Showtime! Showtime, the founder and the leader of the Pro Wrestling Revolution, has won the Tuesday Night Wars title from Big D. Dan Rostowski by one of the closest margins ever, just 12 votes, which will be followed by a first ever dream match next week. You have reached the Smart Mark Pro Wrestling Hotline, updated for Thursday, October 1st. And if you're calling between midnight and 2 a.m., you're going to have to wait a couple more hours for Mark Marzecca to get back from work. He's running behind today. But we will give you the voting results from Tuesday Night Wars. Thanks, as always, to the hundreds of you who voted on Tuesday Night Wars this week. And congratulations to Ron Showtime, the new Tuesday Night Wars champion, who beat Dan Rostowski by a 52.3% to 47.7% margin. Ron received 134 votes compared to 122 for Dan, a margin of just 12 votes. Six people called it a tie this week, and we got the usual scattering of votes for Kamala, Michael Jordan, Batman and Robin, the Titan Triple Threat, The Rock, Silver King, The Edge, and Nick Ginsmore, the ultimate jobber in all of wrestling. Next week, Ron Showtime will be defending the Tuesday Night Wars title against WCW Hotline host Jason Shia in their first debate ever. The interview with Mark Warzeka will be either at 2 a.m. early Thursday morning or possibly around 9 a.m. on Thursday. 
and depending. In the meantime, to hear Mark Orzeka's analysis of Monday Night Wars this week, hit option three if you have a message for him. And on the good segment, set a stage on the mic, and we're putting it on wax. It's the new time.
tape. There, finally. Message marked. I'm going to have to hit skip. Yeah, we're stuck. Message skipped. Next message. Message skipped. It'll be the final message of the show. Message skipped. Next message. Message skipped. Message skipped. Message skipped. Next message. Message marked urgent. What's that big deal? Not her. She does not mark messages. I don't think she knows about that urgent. Hey, Big D, down the south, Steve, this is one of your biggest fans, uh, Justin LaRue. Yeah, he's message skipped. Next message. Hello. You know me by now. <laughs> I'm not that mysterious. I just happen to be around WCW a lot, and I happen to be involved in it. Well, nothing I tell you is all that big a deal. But anyway, um, about the Giant, if WCW offers him more than WWF presumably is offering him, that would mean he's making more money than Hall and Nash. Now, if you remember, Hall and Nash have in their contracts that they would only be paid less than Hogan. Everybody else would have to be paid less than them. When Hart came over, they got a raise because they weren't, they were picked up. He was getting more. Now, if the Giant gets more than them, you can expect a really big uproar in the, uh, in the ranks of WCW, particularly from Nash, who also does booking. And Hall as well really doesn't have a like to stand in at this point to do his antics. But still, if Giant gets more than a million dollars a year, you can expect that Hall and Nash will get a raise as well, and there's going to be a lot of people upset, including GDP and others who deserve more. They feel that the Giant, well, the Giant's not well liked in the locker room. Thanks. Bye. Message skip. End of messages. To listen to you, goodbye. Okay. So she's claiming that it's going to cause just as much havoc in WCW as I think it would cause a lot of havoc in WWF too, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. What do you think he's going to do? I think he's, like Shia said, I just think he's bullshit. I don't think they just going to need him an offer. And they're going to take that chance? With WWF? Yeah. No, I mean, can WCW take that chance? Oh, no, they can't. They have no choice. Well, I think that they're probably going to rock in a hard place on this one. Now, are you familiar with this latest Scott Hall arrest thing? Yeah. You know, for the car and all that? Yeah. What do you think? Do you think he did it because he's out of control, or do you think he did it because he's willing to do anything to try to get fired? Well, he's not out of control. He's just doing stupid shit. You know, he's not getting in much trouble. He's out of control. He'd be doing serious stuff like right. only this assault that he couldn't buy his way out of. The shit he does, he'd never expect anyone to do. But you think it's, a, it's part of a carefully contrived plan because she thinks that he really is out of control. Who do you think this woman is? I, I think it could be Jamie Engel. My God, if it's Jamie Engel, that is so awesome. Yeah. I can't imagine that she actually takes the trouble to listen to this line. Yeah. yeah. It makes sense that she would know about it, too. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I, it's, it's, it's almost like, for some reason, the people at WCW are mesmerized by me. I have no idea why. They have been for years. Breslov always called my line. I never understood why. There's hundreds of lines out there. It's like the meeting now. I don't know why. I don't understand either. I don't have a clue. Just Maybe because it's free and because you're good at what you do. I don't know. There's so many hotlines around the country. I don't know. I'm sort of like a, I'm a swing vote and I don't always side with the same side every week. So we know that if I say it, I really mean it most of the time. Except when I'm doing spoofs. <laughs> uh, you know, your, your main man on option one is the name Bob Lawson. Yeah. That's a hilarious message. Reed Flair is going to win the title from Goldberg. <laughs> that is so funny. I left him a return message saying, no, you skipped something. Bob, uh, first he has to beat Nick Dinsmore. <laughs> I said, I don't think Reed Flair can really beat Nick Dinsmore. Then I, I predict that Dinsmore is going to win the world title from Goldberg at the end of the show. I mean, let's face it, almost any booking angle would work better than the stuff they've been doing lately. Oh, yeah. I bet you when uh, Nick Dinsmore does get his world title shot, you Believe it or not, Nick, although I Nick you know, I was the biggest fan of Billy Kidman for the two years he never won a match on night, so I knew he was going to be great someday. He, he was a great jobber. He's getting good reaction in WWE, too. Sure, he's a terrific wrestler. He's just, he's, he's one of the best of their, of their young wrestlers, one of their cruisers. Now, as for Nick Dinsmore, I know it sounds like a joke now, but, you know, it's funny. You give anybody a push in pro wrestling, the push itself can get them over sometimes. Right. Sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't. But anyway, so those are like the... Like in ECW, every one of their main stars are a bunch of jabbers who just got that right push. Yeah, what, in, in the WWF or in WCW? ECW. The whole ECW company is like... ECW, that. right, right. Yeah, they're all jobbers. That's right. If those, those guys were anywhere else, like, let's see how, let's see how far Sam then gets when he starts with WCW. He ain't gonna get nowhere. Nice tape on your lunch break, uh, tape there. What, today? Yeah, you, you really got to... Do you do that about, off a... Do you even have, like, an outline of what you're gonna say? No, I just write down, like, four or five words of a person's question, and I... You have to write down the... the, the yeah. Their name you know, the person asking the question himself. Yeah. Well, that, that'll put you in good stead on the debate, because you have to... <laughs> the pressure's amazing. You have to think instantly. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, you've never debated China before, but I've never been on a line with him. What's that? Never even been on a line with him. No, you've been on the same line. Me, you, and Les fell on China one time. Remember? Not an update. Oh, not an update. No. But when it comes down to those final four or five minutes, well, the pressure is just unbelievable. You have to think of the right answer. Like